Sergeant Newton, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Sergeant, how long have you been employed with the state police? Uh, approximately 16 years. What were some of your initial assignments with the state police? Uh, I started my uh, career with the state police in November of 2007. I attended the training academy for approximately seven months. Um, you know, we were trained in uh, criminal investigation, accident investigation, firearms, emergency vehicle operations, etc. cetera. Uh, tested on uh, those uh, subjects. Uh, graduated in May of 2008. I was uh, assigned to Troop G in Bridgeport as a patrol trooper, uh, where I spent about uh, 10 years as a trooper there. Um, I had some ancillary duties during my time there. I was a patrol canine handler uh, who was cross-trained in narcotics detection. I was also a member of the state police tactical unit. I was a tactical operator uh, and assistant team leader on the West attack team. 2018 is when I uh, was transferred to Western District Major Crime as a detective, uh, where I was stationed at the Troop G office in Bridgeport. Prior to becoming a state police officer, did you serve in a branch of the United States military? I did. Which branch, sir? I was in the United States Marine Corps. And did you serve in any wars? I did. Which war? Uh, I was spent a little bit of time in Afghanistan, and I was deployed uh, with the infantry in a combat tour to Fallujah, Iraq. What years were you with the United States Marines? 2001 to 2006. Directing your attention now to May of 2019, what unit of the state police were you assigned to? In May of 2019, I was a detective assigned to the Western District Major Crime Squad. Have you since ascended to becoming a sergeant? Yes, I have. What year did that take place? I was promoted to sergeant April of 2022. Are you still with the Western District Major Crime? No, I'm not. Where are you currently assigned? Uh, presently uh, assigned as a detective sergeant with uh, Central District Major Crime Squad. I supervise the uh, Troop H CI office in Hartford. And just for the jury's benefit, when you say CI office, what does CI stand for? Criminal investigation. I want to direct your attention now to May 28, 2019, a Tuesday. Did you become involved in the Jennifer Dulos investigation? Yes, I did. How did you learn about this case? Uh, from a phone call from my supervisor. Where did you report on May 28, 2019? Uh, that morning, I reported to the New Canaan Police Department. Why did you report to the New Canaan Police Department? Uh, so we were assisting the New Canaan Police with a missing persons investigation. And since they were the primary for the case, we worked out of their police department. Um, the crime scene was in New Canaan. The uh, person who was missing resided in New Canaan. So the uh, command staff at the time felt that that was the best place to work from, so that's why we were there. Approximately how many troopers and New Canaan police personnel were working out of the police department when you arrived on May 28th? Quite a few. Were you given any specific tasks on that day? Yes, I was. What types of tasks were you given? Uh, so, <clears throat> myself and uh, Detective Sergeant Duva went <coughs> over to 69 Wells Lane. Um, and we went into the three bay garage. I was assigned by Sergeant Petresca to take photographs of the shelving units that were in the, I guess you'd call it the third garage bay. So if you're <coughs> facing the bays, there are three, it'd be the far right bay. Um, so I took photographs of the shelves and the purpose of those photographs were to then interview the nanny um, of the, the family of the, for the children uh, down in New York City. And we wanted to show her those pictures to see if she could um, identify any items that may be out of place or missing um, or that she didn't recognize. So that was the purpose of those photographs. If I were to show you those photographs, would you recognize them, sir? Yes, I would. For the record, Your Honor, we're projecting State's Exhibit 16, which is a disc. <clears throat> We're just waiting for the disc to load. And I'm going to ask. 
Uh, if we can begin with item number three in that disc. Sergeant Buten, do you recognize this photograph? Yes, I do. What is that photograph of, sir? That is a photograph of uh, a couple of the shelving units in the right garage bay located at 69 Wells Lane, New Canaan. Is that one of the photographs that you took when you went to 69 Wells Lane? Yes, it is. And I'm just going to ask if we can call up item number four now. Could you just indicate to the jury what we're looking at here? Uh, so this photograph is also of the shelving units that were in the garage. Um, it's a little over from the other photograph, and it just depicts some sporting goods and uh, Tupperware containers and some other items. Thank you. Did you ultimately go to New York City? Yes. What day? Uh, the same day. Who, if anyone, went to New York City with you? Uh, Detective Ryan for Shet. What borough of New York City did you go to? Uh, so we were in Manhattan on Park Avenue for one of the stops. Um, I don't recall the other borough. Uh, Specifically with respect to Miss Almeida. It was in Manhattan. And did you meet with her? Uh, we did. Approximately for how long did you meet with Miss Almeida? Um, I don't remember uh, for how long. I'd have to look at my report to see. Um, I know there's a recording of our interview with her. Did you show her photographs of the garage that you had taken? Yes. And did she provide you with a statement? She did. After meeting with Ms. Almeida on May 28th, did you perform additional tasks for the case that week? Yes. Describe to the jury some of the things that you did. Uh, so we looked for uh, video footage. We canvassed some of the areas in New Canaan to try to find video. Um, and specifically Friday, May the 31st, um, I was tasked with going up to the Capital City Command Center um, to review some video footage with one of the intel analysts up there from uh, items uh, that had been recovered the night prior by the Central District Major Crime Squad. Uh, the purpose of me going up there was to ensure that um, nothing was missed. Who gave you that assignment? That was Detective Sergeant Ventresca. And when you say the purpose of your visit was to ensure that nothing had been missed, had someone already reviewed the C4 footage at that point? Yes, to my understanding, they had. Approximately what time of day did you arrive at C4? Uh, it was midday, late morning, early afternoon. And upon arrival at C4, which incidentally stands for Capital City Command Center, correct? That is correct. Who, if anyone, did you meet with? Uh, I can remember meeting with uh, a gentleman by the name of Josh Quint, who is an intelligence analyst uh, with the Harvard Police Department. And when you met with Josh Quint, what did you do? Uh, so he began to take me through some of the footage that they had found um, using the computer program that they have. Um, they're able to find certain vehicles of uh, uh, a type and color, as I understand it. And so... Um, those folks were given the types of vehicles that we were interested in that were associated with Mr. Dulos. Uh, and so they, they ended up finding a black, what appeared to be a black Ford Raptor pickup truck traveling uh, along Albany Avenue, um, where Mr. Dulos had discarded um, several items in the city trash receptacles. So he began to so, uh, show me some of that footage. <clears throat> and did you have a Description of Mr. Dulos prior to arriving at C4? Uh, yes. And did you also have a description of someone named Michelle Traconis? Yes, I did. Do you see Michelle, Michelle Traconis in the courtroom? Yes, I do. Could you point her out and tell us what article of clothing she's wearing, a shirt, a color shirt? She is seated uh, on the, my right side of the table over there. She's wearing what appears to be a blue coat and a green sweater. Judge, he identified the defendant. What was the general description of Michelle Traconis that you had? Uh, I, I didn't see any photo. Honor, hearsay. Well, what was the general description? Well, it's offered to show, as the court hears it, 
what to look for. That's right. So overruled. What was the general description you had of Shelter Cronus? Uh, I didn't have a photograph of her, but I was told that she was uh, uh, middle-aged, tall, slender, and had brown hair. And have you since had a chance to meet with uh, the defendant in person? Yes. And did she match that general description? She did. As you were reviewing the C4 footage, did you review any video in which it appeared that an object consistent with a weather tech liner was displayed? Yes, I did. Your Honor, I'm going to object. The video speaks for itself. The, wit the, the, the jury has now seen it multiple times. That's a leading question. It also assumes facts not in evidence, and I ask that it be stricken. Well, well the question was, did you uh, review the video and see what would be described as a weather tech map? Well, that's leading. The jury has seen the video, but the court is not certain that the jury could conclude that what came out of that vehicle was a weather tech mat. So as far as a leading question is concerned, the court will sustain the objection. Did you review video in which uh, um, someone, well, strike that. Did you, did you also have a description of Mr. Dulos? Yes, I did. And what was that general description? Uh, also the same, middle-aged, uh, white male, um, average height and build. And did you review video in which Mr. Dulos had objects in his hands? Your, Your Honor, I'm going to object. Nobody has identified the video individual at this point. So it's not only leading, but it's assuming facts not in it. I'll rephrase. <clears throat> did you review video in which someone who matched the general description of Mr. Dulos that you had been provided had objects in his hands? Yes, I did. All right. And can you describe for the jury in general terms, what type of objects you viewed in this individual's hands? Again, Your Honor, the jury has seen the video. It's not proper for this witness to editorialize about what's in the video. He can certainly testify to what he did, but to let him describe it is, I suggest, uh, some of the jury on their own can figure that out. Well, Sorry. the court disagrees that the jury on its own can figure that out. It is not clear that the jury could figure out that what was held was a weather tech mat. The jury can figure out what a garbage bag looks like, but the court is going to overrule the objection. You may answer, sir. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question for me? <clears throat> Did someone who matched the general description of Mr. Dulos have any objects in his hand, and can you describe what objects you viewed? Uh, yes, so several. Um, I observed the individual take what appeared to be uh, contractor-style black garbage bags from uh, the rear of his vehicle. Um, a uh, What I would describe to be um, a square or rectangular um, black rubber mat cons consistent with being like a floor liner or something like that. Um, let's, well, let's just stop there for just one second. If we can call up, I'm just going to ask if my colleague. <coughs> this is States 36. going to ask that we pause it right there for just one moment. Um, Sergeant Buten, is this the uh, C4 footage that you reviewed? Yes, it is.
So we're just going to pause that for one second. Is this the um, mail that you were referencing earlier that matched the general description of Mr. Dulos? Yes, it is. Just going to pause it there. Sergeant Buten, you testified earlier that you observed this male holding what appeared to be a rubber mat. Is that correct? Correct. Is this the object that you were referring to? Yes, it is. And again, Your Honor, I just want to make clear I'm objecting. This is lay opinion, it's speculation. Um, there's no, from this, you could certainly not tell what material it's made out of. It's irrelevant. And I, I also just would throw in that it's a characterization of a video. This is not firsthand. So, uh, and finally, this is, um, I would say, a violation of the Code of Evidence 4 3. Well, the court, based on the video and the objection, would pose a question Sergeant Buten, did you find out later that that was a square or rectangular rubber mat? Or did you determine that just from this video that that was a square rectangular rubber mat? So it appears to me just based on the video, Your Honor, but I also had knowledge of the fact that there was one missing. Oh, again, now. Well, the answer is, the answer is, it appears that way, but I took other things into consideration. That's the answer, which suggests to this court that the video alone does not suggest that this is a black square rubber mat. The video alone, according to this witness, he did not conclude on the video alone that that was a WeatherTech mat. So you may proceed. Yeah, and just to be clear, you're not 100% sure what that is, correct? Absolutely not. You're testifying it's consistent with Again, what it appears to be. It's, well, I, oh, that, that's a mischaracterization. It appeared to him to be a black rectangular mat. He had other information that led him to believe it was a WeatherTech mat. That's the testimony. It appeared to be consistent with a rubber that mat. court is indicating it's sustaining the objection. You can finish playing it. Are you familiar with something known as WeatherTech Liner? Uh, yes, I am. What is WeatherTech Liner? Uh, they're laser cut floor liners. I actually own a pair myself. Um, the company is here in the United States, and they basically make custom floor liners for a multitude of different vehicles, makes models and years and whatnot. They make uh, front and rear floor liners, utility area liners, seat covers, etc. Yeah, the commercials are all over TV. And what material are WeatherTech liners made out of? A uh, black rubber material, or a hardened plastic, I guess would probably be a better description. But the, the mats in the back are more uh, more rubber. I think the, the floor liners where your feet go are harder, but the ones for the back are a little more flexible, I guess, is, is how I describe them. And when you, when you say in the back, what area of the vehicle are you referring to? The car right, right. I'm going to object foundation. The fact that he might own an SUV or might know something about it, it's irrelevant. And he's not an expert in this area. He doesn't work for uh, the WeatherTech or any other company that installs mats. So therefore, I would argue that this is not appropriate question. Well, the question has to do with 
what does WeatherTech manufacture? That's how the court understands the question. And if he's familiar with, if this witness is familiar with what WeatherTech manufactures, the court will allow the testimony. So, overruled. When, when you mentioned the back, what area of the vehicle are you referring to? Uh, the cargo area, the utility area, uh, the back of an SUV behind the seats. <clears throat> Did there come a point in time where you reviewed um, additional uh, surveillance footage in which the person who appeared to be the same male operator discarded additional items? Yes. Can you describe that for the jury? Uh, yes. So the final stop that the individual appearing to be Mr. Dulos made was on Albany Avenue in front of a Jamaican bakery, I believe at the intersection of Blue Hills Avenue. Um, he exited his vehicle with what appeared to be maybe a pile of papers or something. Again, Your fact. Honor. I'm, I don't know what it was. I'm objecting. What appears, again, is the same thing. If well, it's not recovered. Well, he just indicated he did not know what it was. So perhaps you did not hear that part of his response. He said it appears to be paper. I don't know what it was. Is what he, said. he exited his vehicle with, I don't know what it was. That's the testimony. So, uh, so, so, so he exited the vehicle with, it, with unknown objects, something in his hands. I just couldn't make out what. And he walked over to the trash receptacle and he discarded whatever that uh, unknown object or group of objects were. However, um, another object remained in his hand um, that he did not discard in the garbage. And at C4, they have very large screen TVs, much like this one, and they can zoom in. And when we zoomed in, um, Mr. Quinton and myself were of the opinion that it looked Objection. like... Objection. Well, sustained. When you zoomed in, were you able to see the colors of the object discarded in the store more clearly? Yes. Can you describe to the jury what color the object was? So the object overall looked white, and we saw like uh, orange and blue um, on the object. And... I could, I could say what that, to me, that looked like, but I... No, that's all right. Okay. Um. <clears throat> now, um, actually, we're just, if we could play that portion of the video. We could pause it right there. Sergeant Buton, I just want to direct your attention now to the vehicle itself. Does it appear as though a female passenger has exited the vehicle at this point? I would object, first of all, it's a mischaracterization. Nobody's exited it. And second of all, we're again having him characterize what's on the video that all of these jurors can see. I would submit that under State versus Holly, it's improper for a lay witness to narrate a video when he wasn't <clears throat> present for the incident. So if I can just be heard on this, Your Honor, and, and if I have to be heard at sidebar, I will, um, but I, I'd like to make an offer of proof to the court. Well, the question is, does it appear to you as if a female is exiting the Raptor? That's the question. So does it appear to you that a female passenger is exiting the Raptor? Well, the question itself you can be heard, counsel. The question itself 
is an interpretive narrative. What the court and the jury is able to see is a door open, someone leaning out of that door. The issue of whether it's a female and whether she's exiting in the common sense of exiting as in getting out of the vehicle, according to this video, would be a mischaracterization. I'll rephrase, Judge. So Can you just, at this point, the video is paused. Can you, um, directing your attention now to the individual uh, just above the male operator, can you describe that individual for the jury? Thank you. Again, Your Honor, I think the, the image speaks for itself, and this witness is not in any better position than the jurors to see what's in the video. Well, in fact, maybe you could sharpen the question, Counsel. Can, can you describe the individual? What is seen here? You cannot tell height or weight. So, you, what can be described from what is on the video is fairly limited. if that's the video from which you are asking the question. It is, Your Honor. I'm just simply asking him to describe what he's observing on the video. Well, what the court is going to do is listen to the description and entertain any objections after that. Could you describe the individual um, above the male operator? Uh, yes. So uh, it appears to be a white female. Uh, looks like wearing a short sleeve shirt. And it's kind of hard to tell, but maybe her hair is in a ponytail. And I can see at least one of her feet on the sidewalk. And her right hand appears to be reaching down toward, um, toward the, the brick or pavement. Was this the only time um, that you observed a female with this particular male individual in the, in the surveillance footage? On this footage, yes. You keep playing. Sergeant Buton, where on Albany Avenue is this particular trash receptacle and store located? I believe the address is 1344 Albany Avenue. It's at the intersection of Blue Hills. Based on what you saw on this video, can you describe for the jury what actions you took? Uh, yes. So, uh, as I stated earlier, um, the individual appearing to be Mr. Dulos through some items. I'm going to object. The item question out. was, what did you do next? And instead, he's giving another narrative. Well, the question is, well, what did you do after reviewing the video? And he began by saying, the individual who appeared to be Mr. Dulos, this is preliminary, as the court hears it, overruled. Um, the fact that uh, I observed that individual throw those things out in the trash receptacle but choose to discard whatever the other object was down the storm drain um, was interesting to me. And I wanted to try to recover whatever that was. Um, and so I inquired with the C4 folks um, about who maintained the storm drain and who we would use to um, assist us in recovering that item. And the answer I was given was <coughs> Uh, which is the Metropolitan District Control, or the a water authority, essentially, for the greater Hartford area. Um, they sent out a pump truck to us out on the street. Um, well, let, me ask, let me ask you another question. Sure. Did you head to this area of Albany Avenue? Yes. Approximately how long did it take you to arrive? I don't remember. Was it within the hour, would you say? Uh, yes. And who, if anyone from the state police, met you at this location? Uh, Detective Fitzsimons, uh, 
Detective Zella, who was on the dive team, um, Trooper Sanders, Trooper Chapman, also divers. Um, I had divers come just because I didn't know what we were going to encounter, if we were going to need them to go down there or if the pump truck was going to be able to facilitate removing the item. Um, a lot of unknowns, so I was just trying to think outside the box and bring whatever resources I knew we had available to the area. And you indicated that MDC um, showed up with a pump truck, is that correct? That's correct. And once, once MDC arrived with the pump truck, what happened next? Uh, Detective Zella and myself um, basically told them to empty out the truck. They had relayed to us that they were pumping out other drains that day. Uh, and we wanted to ensure that the truck, the tank itself was empty so that if uh, whatever was down there maybe was sucked up the hose, we'd be able to empty out the back and definitively say that whatever was in the tank came from that particular storm drain. Did the MDC truck leave at that point? Yes. Did it eventually return? It did. Approximately how long did it take to return? Maybe a half an hour or so. And during this half hour, did you remain at that location with your fellow state police officers? Uh, I left quickly to meet up with the search and rescue canines. I gave them a map so they could begin to search the area of Albany and Milford. Um, the footage depicted that black raptor turning onto Milford Street and uh, disappearing for some time before it came back out into the view on Albany Ave. So <clears throat> I got the search and rescue canines into that area so that they could begin to search that area. And after I met with them, I came back to um, the area of the storm drain. And were you present when the MDC truck arrived? Yes. Do you recall how many employees from MDC responded? Two, I believe. <clears throat> when they arrived, what steps did they take in your presence? Um, they had showed us the back. They opened it up, showed us it was empty, closed it. Um, they removed the grate um, from the storm drain. They had like a big hook that they put down there and pulled it out. Um, they lowered a hose down into uh, the storm drain where all the water was, and they turned on their truck and started to suck out water. As they were sucking out water, can you describe what happened next? Uh, yes, the, uh, the envelope <clears throat> actually got stuck to their equipment, um, and they were able to pull it out like that. All right, I want to just break this down a little bit. You say the envelope. Can you describe what you heard as they were sucking uh, water out of the sewer? Yeah, it was like a clink. It was like a clink noise. And after you heard the clink noise, what did you see next? Uh, as they began to lift their equipment up, you could see that there was um, an envelope, like a FedEx envelope, that was coming up out of the water with their equipment. And Detective Fitzsimons had gloved hands, and he reached in and recovered um, the envelope and put it over by the sidewalk, opened it up, and when he opened it up to pull out the contents, we saw two Connecticut license plates in the envelope. <coughs> Were photographs taken of those license plates? Yes. May I have this marked for identification, Your Honor? What number? Well, not yet, but yes. <clears throat> 40 for identification. I did provide attorney Schoenholm with a copy. I don't know if there's any objection. No objection. Thank you. Move it in as a full exhibit. 40 admitted as a full exhibit. And I'm just going to begin with um, <coughs> displaying a photograph labeled 683 
underscore zero 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 one. Sergeant Buten, do you recognize that photograph, sir? Yes, I do. Can you tell the jury what that photograph is? Uh, that photograph is a picture of the white envelope that was uh, recovered from the storm drain on Albany and Blue Hills on and Friday, you, May 31st. Did you witness this envelope in the position it is in this photograph? Yes. Showing you um, Photograph labeled 683 underscore 0002. Are those the license plates? Yes, they are. And did you view these license plates um, in their uh, position? Yes. As they are in this photograph? Yes. And these are, this is photograph 03 in that file. This, these are the same license plates, is that correct? Yes, sir. Photograph number four. Same license plates, correct? Yes. Thank you. Um, actually, if we could just leave that up for one second. The um, license plate here reads 5T6WBU. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. While you were um, present, were any efforts made <clears throat> by state police personnel to run these license plates? Yes. What were the results when these license plates were run? Uh, I called into dispatch and ran them as they are, and they came back to nothing. When you say they came back to nothing, what does that mean? It means there was no record found, meaning no such plates existed in the Connecticut DMV database. And so after you received notification that no such plates existed, did you notice anything about the sequence of the letters and numbers themselves? Uh, well, yeah, we noticed that they were a bit odd. Um, typically, uh, plates that were issued out like that were, um, would start with three numbers and then end with three letters. And obviously here you have um, a letter mixed in with the numbers. Uh, so that was odd to us. And, uh, to Detective Fitz uh, Simons' credit, he actually, uh, with his gloved hand, started to mess around with some of the characters that looked funny, funny to us. And that's when we realized there was some effort made to alter their appearance. And when you say that there was some effort made to alter their appearance, can you be a little bit more descriptive for the jury? Yeah, yes. Um, so if, if I may, can I? Yes, sir. So this, this T here, when uh, Detective Fitzsimons messed around with it, we could see that the, the top portion actually wasn't the plate itself. It was some type of blue tape with like a clear adhesive is the best way I could describe it. So this character is actually a one. Um, the same here, this was made to be a B, but it's actually a D. And then here we have what is supposed to be a J with the extra material added to make it appear to be a U. So were you able to discern what the actual plate numbers and letters were? Yes. And was a subsequent um, search done for those particular plates? Yes, it was. Who did that? I did. And what were the results, sir? So I called dispatch back and ran the plates the correct way. And they came back uh, canceled on a 2007 Chevy Suburban uh, that was registered to Mr. Duos. This mark for identification. Yeah. I think it's a full exhibit by agreement. Yes. I just want to make sure what's in the envelope is what I think is in the envelope. Do that. That's my only. I don't want to be surprised, so if I can just see what's in there. I'm sure, would you like this? I could read this. Oh yeah. Why don't we just leave it for ID for a moment? I probably won't have any objection. I just want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. Thank you. Detective Buton. Better pair. 
Detective Newton, did you um, seize those license plates? Yes. And um, how were those license plates seized? I put them into a bag and secured them in the trunk of my cruiser. And if I were to show you <coughs> license plates, would you recognize them? Yes, I would. We have some gloves in front of you, sir. Oh, very good. So at this point, I'm just going to ask, well, firstly, let me ask a preliminary question. Um, there is evidence tape on this particular exhibit, is that correct? Yes. And there's also what appears to be uh, numbers DSS 19002984. That's the state laboratory number, is that correct? That's correct. So these license plates have been sent to the state lab since you seized them, is that fair to say? That would be accurate, yes. Um, I'm just going to ask that you cut open this envelope and just peer inside and tell us what you see. Okay. that. Is there anything else in the back, sir? Um, I have to open it up a little more to see, sorry. Yes, there is. What else is in the bag? It's, uh, it's a white FedEx uh, envelope that the plates were in. Are these the objects that you seized on May 31st, 2019? Yes, they are. Judge, I move it in. Um, I need to see what else is in the bag. Just don't want to bring it through. Okay. There are. There are. Yeah. Will you just maybe do it over here on the side? Have no objection to looking out of these other items that were in there will have to be to a different witness. So, so as long as it's, those are kept separate, I'm fine with that. And that is that stage 40? This is stage 40, Judge. And just for the record, there are several smaller envelopes which we're going to tie up through another witness to turn to show what he's asking that we do so. I have no objection to that. However, I do want to keep everything together at this point. So if these can be labeled perhaps. Um, you know, 40A, excuse me, 41A um, for identification purposes only, and if we can just keep everything together for the time being, 
So stage 40 will be admitted as a full exhibit. 41, Judge. 41 will be admitted as a full exhibit. 41A is for ID purposes only. Correct. Actually, there's several of them. So we'll just label them A through. How, well, um, how many are there? Seven. Eight through G. Forty-one A through G for everyone. Forty-one A through G, identification purposes only. Okay. 